with somebody. I hope I did it. It I... would be so difficult for you, wouldn't it, Ellie? Well, just being not once I was into it. It was such an intriguing character. Everything went with it. I mean, nothing about that character is Jill at all. It's the person mm -hmm. that I play. You know, I've understood it that for a long time. A lot of the English actors find it easy, quite easy, to do the southern dialects well, of our country. Well, this isn't, yes. I know Arkansas isn't do. quite southern, it isn't but still... southern. I couldn't, I couldn't use a lot of those things. I, yeah. Robert really made me do Arkansas. But I used to do a lot of review in England, you know, mm -hmm. and that's yeah. where I sang. And I did accent, so I have quite a good ear. But Robert wouldn't let me go, get away with anything. After every take, he'd give me, um, let me see, one O is for accent, two O's was for performance, and if I got both, it meant my character was right and the accent. If I only got oh, one, something great. was wrong. You know, mm. he's, he's wonderful. Joe, tell us what this clip is about. I, do you know, um, I only found out when I got here, it's, I believe, Charlie and I are escaping from Switzerland and we're on um, a train in a car, and it's, I think it's, it's when the car comes off the train. I really am not sure. Okay. I think That's we should look enough. at it. Roll up, Marty. We'll take a look. I hope I do the accent.
One of the surprise hits of, of this TV season is, is a comedy called Taxi. And the young actor who plays Bobby Wheeler in that show is also well known as uh, Kaneki in the movie Grease. Everyone's predicting big things for Jeff Conaway. Welcome. <laughs> Hey, how's it going? Hey. <laughs> Last week the show was uh, number six. Well, we got 10. it up to four. We got it up to four. Okay. That is wild. That is wild. It didn't surprise me when you said it was a surprise hit. Never surprised me with those writers you have. We had them for seven years and we were so happy. Are they the same writers? Same writers, the writers, the writers. Oh, They're just oh. great. They're Aren't amazing. they sensational? They're amazing. I, I couldn't believe it. I, I feel like I'm on the golden egg of television series. Mm -hmm. It's just great. Uh, did you have a feeling going in that this was going to connect? I mean, did you have kind of a gut feeling on it? Yeah, I did. Uh, because of... I respected these people so much because of their, their, their record, their incredible record. And, and just talking to them, I had meetings with them and we discussed the scripts and all. And I, I just had a real good feeling. And Judd Hirsch, I really think, is a great actor. Oh, oh boy. Did you see him in chapter two? Uh, no, I missed it. Oh, talk about awards. He was the only one that didn't get. Uh, that guy is brilliant. He is. He's too, what he does with the show, he's, he, we call him Papa Judd. You know, mm -hmm. he, ta he takes care of us all. Yeah. It's good. It's good. Interesting combination of characters on that show. The other. The other young man was a, a prize fighter. Yeah, Tony, Tony Danza. That's amazing. Well, he's a, a fighter. I don't know. He's he's an actor, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, you don't think of him as having been a fighter. No, I mean uh, he's very natural. He's and his instincts are so good that that uh, he just helps me constantly. I mean, I look at him and he's and he's right there for me. He's like somebody I studied with maybe six years. Are you a natural actor, or have you studied this for a long time? Well, I started off as a child actor, and I what uh, age? Uh, nine. How did that happen? And, uh... Is that your mother? <laughs> no. <laughs> she, she couldn't make I mean, it Who tonight. else would applaud for nine? What is that, your lucky Another number? Another nine-year-old. <laughs> oh. How? How did you get into... Uh, start out at nine? Uh, well, my parents were, were in business, and, uh, I'd always wanted to be an astronaut, and... And uh, at, at seven, I had to get glasses, and so I knew that was it. And so I didn't know what to do with my life for two years, and, yeah. uh... Where are my glasses? They're not on my face. <laughs> what is this? Let's make a deal? <laughs> Jay, can't you calm them down? <laughs> uh, so, so I was, got my mother to let me go in and audition for a show. Uh, actually, she was going to audition, and I went in with her, and then they were looking for kids that could, that could speak with a southern accent, and I'd been bugging her for a while. And so she said, my son. So I went out there, and I did it, and they... And could you back. speak with a southern accent at that age? Well, yeah, because I spent time in, in South Carolina, Five Points, South Carolina. I oh. spent some time down there, and, and so... Uh, what, what, were you an army brat or what? No, I was just a, a, a theatrical brat, you know. Ah. <laughs> was... I hate that expression, but that's what they say, Air Force brat, Army brat. I don't know where that came from. Well, you get shipped around a lot. And then from... It, you just caught on? You, you liked it? And so, I loved it. They, they called me at my 10th birthday and told me I had the job. Was it a movie or a play? It was a Broadway play called All the Way Home. Uh, Arthur oh, Penn directed yes, it, and uh, Colleen Dewhurst and Arthur Hill, mm -hmm. and Lillian Gish was in it. And... When you did Grease on Broadway, John Travolta was in the, uh, the chorus. And in the picture, the roles were reversed, weren't they? Yeah, well, he wasn't in the chorus. He was a supporting role, ah. a, a duty, is what, the part that he played. Did you get to know John then? Yeah, we had the same manager, so we knew each other before then. And uh, it was just nice that we were doing the show together. And, and uh, then we both came out to the coast and spent some time and worked and, you know, hard getting work. And, and uh, then we ended up in a movie together, which was great. And How did you feel when the roles were reversed in the movie? Well, for me, it was really, it was like a, a, a challenge to, to do something else. You know, I was really happy to be in the movie, but... Yeah. But it was great to be able to do a character that I'd always been kind of... I didn't think I was like Kaneki. I, I was nervous about doing it, you know, but I, I had a good time in the end. I, now, I read that you are really determined to get cast in the movie. I mean, uh, the Grease movie. You yeah, were really I was. Determined. Yeah, I, I... So much so that you, you convinced the producers that, you know, you knew what to do with your hair and everything. You were the right man and everything. Yeah, I figured that uh, the only way I was going to get this part was to go in and steal it. You know, I was going to go in there and, and uh, so I brought you, did chains. Did you grease your hair down and everything? Oh, I greased it back. I brought chains and switchblades with me and wore a leather jacket and put on tight jeans and boots and 
the guys that I was auditioning with, I was whipping the knife out on them, you know. <laughs> no, I didn't have any competition after that day. It was all over. What did you put on your hair? Vaseline or what? Yeah, we uh, used pomade. It was a... Uh, I remember. Wax. It was terrible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Murder to get off, isn't it? Uh, yeah, I used to have to wash my hair like 20 times to, just to get it out. It was, you know, spick and span, Ajax, <laughs> anything. I tried scotch once, it didn't work, so. <laughs> scotch on your hair? Anything, you know, because you'd want to get it off. You know, you'd, you'd wake up and you'd be sliding off your pillow with all the <laughs> <laughs> did you, what did you use for your audition line? Did they have written dialogue for you, or did you have to go in and improvise something? Both. Ah. Both. They had the, the dialogue well, for me. They give you your head a little bit, let you do some things that you're comfortable with. Is that the idea? Yeah, I think like Greece what? was a, um, really a, a, an ensemble piece in, in the theater as well as on the, uh, on the film. And they knew that it had to have that kind of life to really make it something special, you know? So they gave us a, a, a nice rain, and, and uh, if we came up with something and they liked it, boom, they used it. What did it. you hit them with? What's the first thing you did when you walked in? Oh, I, was, I, I did something that I couldn't do on television first, <laughs> and... Oh. Uh, <laughs> well, can you do anything that you did? Oh, yeah, well, I, you know, I walked in, and I was, you know, with the collar up and the whole thing, and I was just shaking my head up and down. I said, hey, Kaliki, where are you at? And I said, hey, you know, what's going on? And I whipped out my knife, and I started, you know, peeling my nails off. You know? <laughs> and Alan Carr thought that was funny. I think I had him then. I captured his heart with my knife or something. <laughs> <laughs> I, read, I read that two starlets thought you were a pretty big deal and, and would proposition you in your trailer. Ah! <laughs> huh? Huh? How did yeah. you handle that? Well, you know, I, 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 uh, I... <laughs> you notice how he lost his rhythm when I asked him how did he handle that? I, I, every guy would do the same delivery. Well, I, 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 I... Well, I didn't, uh, I didn't do too much with it, you know. I, I, had a, I had a job to do, you know. I had to be serious and really work hard. One of, one of the... <laughs> One of the good things about making that movie is that you met a very special lady. Yeah, it was the best thing about doing the movie. Yeah, it was great. Tell us who she is. Right? Oh, uh, uh, Rona Newton-John is her name and... Not related to... Is she related to Olivia? Yeah, she's uh, her sister. And uh, we met at uh, Alan Carr's Rolodex party, actually, and... and she had... She, uh, she had met me before I met her because she saw the rushes of the I show. I was at that party. The Rolodex party. Were you A to M or M to Z? No, <laughs> I was A to M, but I had to go from M to Z because I couldn't I make too. the A to M night. Helen <laughs> said, you go to so few parties, we'll be happy to have you anytime. But that was incredible, that party. Oh, yeah. His life is just one party from morning to night, isn't it? Yeah, Alan? he's got a disco in his house now. Can too. you imagine having a disco in your house? It's great. Jeez. <laughs> That the same woman that said nine? <laughs> we're going to have to pause it. We're not going to have anything in our house. We'll come right back after this message.
success for my next guest began on an elevator when they met Jermaine Jackson of the Jackson 5. Since then, their career switched into high gear. Here with their new hit is Switch.
There are two famous Spocks in the world, the pediatrician, Dr. Spock, and uh, Star Trek's Mr. Spock. Our next guest is the man most closely identified with those pointy-eared, that pointy-eared character that we're also familiar with. But that's only part of his claim to fame. He is a very fine and, and versatile actor, appearing in plays and movies as well as on TV. Here is Leonard Nimoy. <laughs> Obviously, you two have worked together. Yes.